Hi, and welcome to the New Testament Challenge. My name is Rhonda Brown, Communications Director here at Douglasville First United Methodist Church. Today we'll be reading from Matthew 17. Hear now these words. Chapter 17. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciples asked him, Why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah comes and will restore all things, but I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wished. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. After Jesus and his disciples arrived in Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax came to Peter and asked, Doesn't your teacher pay the temple tax? Yes, he does, he replied. When Peter came into the house, Jesus was the first to speak. What do you think, Simon? he asked. From whom do the kings of the earth collect duty and taxes? From their own sons or from others? From others, Peter answered. Then the sons are exempt, Jesus said to him. But so that we may not offend them, go to the lake and throw out your line. Take the first fish you catch, open its mouth, and you will find a four drachma coin. Take it and give it to them for my tax and yours. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Greetings. My name is Janifa Rice Singleton, and I am the Associate Pastor at Douglasville First United Methodist Church. Today I will present to you reflections from the 17th chapter of Matthew. In this chapter, Jesus takes three of his disciples to a high mountain top, Peter, James, and John. And on this mountain, Jesus is transfigured right before their eyes. Jesus' face has the appearance of the sun, and his clothing is as white as light. As you can imagine, the disciples were amazed and stunned. They didn't know what to do. And as they look, there not only appears Jesus, but they also see Moses and Elijah. And Peter immediately says that he wants to pitch a tent for the three of them. 
But as they stood there, a voice in the cloud came down and said, This is my son, whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. This is a reminder to the disciples again of who Jesus is. Because we remember from Matthew, the 16th chapter, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do they say that I am? And now there is a voice in the cloud confirming to them who Jesus is. Before they left, Jesus told the disciples not to tell anyone about what they had witnessed until after his death and resurrection. And then the disciples asked him, they came to him and they said, but why then do the teachers of the law say that Elijah must come um, first? See, what they didn't realize that Elijah, or whom they were presuming as Elijah, had already came. And this was John the Baptist. And so Jesus and the disciples, they leave and they go down to the crowd. And when they get down to the crowd, a man approached Jesus with his son who has seizures. So he's, he's demon-possessed and he often tosses himself into fire and water. And the man told Jesus that he took his son to the disciples, but the disciples were unable to heal him. And Jesus turned to the disciples and with frustration and, and you know, because they have the power, but they doubt themselves. And Jesus casts the demon out of the boy. The disciples asked Jesus, and why were we not able to heal this young man? And Jesus tells them about their faith. It is because of their faith. And this is where Jesus tells us that if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, if we say to that mountain, move, that mountain will move. It is the faith. We need faith to enact what God has given to us. We need faith to enact the power of God. Jesus then for a second time reminds the disciples that he would die, but in three days that he would be raised from the dead. And the disciples are grieving over this message from Jesus because surely they don't feel equipped to carry out the message that God wants them to carry out. And they want Jesus to stay with them just a little while longer, not realizing what would happen later on. And then Jesus and the disciples, they go to Capernaum. And then there's a tax collector there. And this tax collector asks Peter if his teacher pays taxes. And Peter, being the Peter that he is, answers, yes, he pays taxes. See, as usual, Peter answers a question without really knowing the answer, putting Jesus and the disciples in an awkward position. Jesus used this situation, however, to emphasize the king's role and he says to them you know Jesus said should um, just as kings pay no taxes and collect none from their family Jesus the king owe no taxes but Jesus supplied the tax payment for both himself and for Peter rather than offending the tax collectors he, what he does is he sends Peter back out to fish and he tells Peter when he catches his first fish to look into the fish's mouth, and there he will find a coin. And Jesus' words were fulfilled. Jesus, Peter went out, caught this fish, opens the mouth, and there's a coin. Jesus will provide everything that we need just when we need it. It may not always come in the form that we think, but our God is a provider. And in this passage again, Jesus is asking us to have faith. This is God's word for God's people. I hope that you find it, it enriching and that it will provide something that will help you on this journey. Have a great day. God bless you.